let's look at some interesting scenarios where through the programming of network elements um the customer or the operator could change the behavior um according to certain requirement so we'll look at a broad framework then we'll discuss some use cases where an operator specifically an operator a uh, programs its own infrastructure that is intra infrastructure or intra operator uh, programming and then we'd look at the specific example out of some use cases so let's define the way we are going to look at the whole situation we can think about the um scenario as a framework uh, where we have uh, different entities these entities would have a relationship that who owns the programmable infrastructure and who gets to uh, program it so these entities like consumer enterprise um operator third party uh, all are assumed to have uh, some control uh, and some infrastructure this would this could include a data center mobile devices and home network elements visually we could look at it as uh, we have operator a we've got operator b these are connected through a network to network infrastructure uh, then we have operator a that is connected to the consumer through the user to network uh, interface uh, the user to network interface for the customer uh, then we have the user to network interface for the enterprise and these two operator a and b are connected through the network to network interface in terms of their possible relationships in which some programming could be done uh, let's look at uh, the uh, operator enterprise and consumer placed across each other so we can think about an operator programming another operator it could be an intra operator programming scenario a uh, operating a or it could be an inter programming scenario where we have uh, through the network to network interface operator a can program the infrastructure of operator b uh, then we have uh, an operator uh, that could possibly program an enterprise or an enterprise could possibly program an operator through the user to network interf interface of the enterprise and correspondingly we could make po all possible combinations the use cases could be numerous uh, for instance uh, we have an operator that is interested in detecting a fault or recovering or isolating an error uh then we could in, in fact we are going to look at this specific example where a new service type is introduced if this needs validation and uh, some regression testing is also going to be required then we could have uh, a system integration uh, relating it to all possible services which are already running um uh, as in devops then we have network elements which could be running third party code um the third party code comes from the third party but it is programmed through the operator itself uh, then we have the non data center applications uh, which the operator has to run itself uh, then uh, uh, if there are multiple vendors then their interoperability has to be ensured and if there is a problem the isolation of the error has to be done by the operator itself so let's look at a specific example for devops that is development and uh, operation where we have a service that we wish to introduce and test it so that's the title of it now in in this scenario and in subsequent uh, scenarios to come this would be the standard template where we'd have a title of the uh, requirement then we have the actors uh, then what is going to be programmed what is going to be programmable the description of the problem itself and then the uh, programmability aspect the network programmability and the advantages so uh, the actors here are going to be of course the service provider develop uh, devops team uh, they are going to ensure that they have enough uh, test resources and network resources so what is programmable in this scenario we have a service development and test environment uh, where uh, we have a, a new service uh, to be tested so uh, the description says it that we have a brand new service uh, which is installed in the service provider facility in a sandboxed environment sandboxing actually means that now we are going to make sure that our existing functions uh, do not falter uh, in order to achieve that uh, we have to make sure that the runtime environment um, that the application is going to run into and the network connectivity that is that would be needed for this particular um, application to run do not affect other things so this has to be 
um, safeguarded or sandboxed. Uh, this environment actually has to be isolated so that the production application uh, uh, and networks uh, are not impacted with the new services behavior. And the, the, the setup is going to be automated. Since we are talking about programmability, we would involve least human intervention. We want the system to do it at its own. So the system is automated uh, from the configuration information. The sandbox environment can be instantiated on demand. Um, a certain timer could be introduced, a time to in initiate the service, test the service, and stop the service, remove the service. And then the execution of test cases with the environment are also automated. Various um, uh, scripts or various QC tests are run. Now, this particular use case focuses on the um, network portion of the sandboxed environment because we are interested in network programmability. So um, the uh, programmability approach would be to develop a new service and test it in unified hardware, software, test cases, and make sure that the software updates are tested in an automated manner. The network programmability would now involve for the operator to have an interface programming interface between the execution environment and the supporting network. This would involve some uh, network configurations, for instance, uh, uh, layer two, layer three uh, uh, addressing uh, has to be carried out, topology has to be created, and then uh, uh, some uh, services have to be provisioned like uh, uh, naming service, uh, discovery service, security service, all these services would be provisioned at runtime. Uh, then uh, current capability requirements on each interface uh, have to be determined in terms of the QoS parameters. Uh, the QoS parameters have to be uh, declared in an XML-like schema where the network has to be told to implement certain functionality. Then on-demand changes to any of the items which are done over the execution cycle. This could include certain topology change uh, if there is a change of users certain increase or decrease in number of users, et cetera, et cetera. So the overall advantage that we are going to get with this uh, is we are going to experiment with untried services in a sandbox environment. Uh, the operator could install some services and if the services are appropriate, could incorporate or commission those services in the uh, network. So the challenges are going to be uh, interesting. The network should be able to engage the physical resources at the network layer to support the services on demand in an automated fashion. Similarly, the network should also be able to isolate the errors so that the production network or the network which is in production in usage is not affected. And now the service providers will have to be involved with software development capability. So they have to have the trained work staff to meet the requirements. The resource that I've taken is the same, uh, the ACTIS report from 2013 operational opportunities and challenges of STN network function virtualization. Um, this particular uh, alliance or the company is um, doing a, a great job in making contribution to certain international standardization activities. You can see that it's involved in 3GPP, it's involved in machine to machine standardization effort and it's accredited by the American National Standards Institute and is also part of the ITUT.